in Psalm 51 verse 5, David said, Behold, I was shaping iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. You see, everyone that is born into this world is born into a world of sin. You are automatically a sinner. The problem here is that with sin, you cannot come near to God. With sin, you know, you cannot approach God. And that's why Jesus came. Everyone born into this world automatically are sinners. You know, being a sinner, you have the nature of the devil. Until you get saved, the Bible way, until you get saved, you free. This is we just have a network issue here. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2 to 3 says, Wherein in time past, ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the loss of our flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath. Once you are born into this world by your parents or however you came in, automatically the Bible calls you a children of wrath, children of disobedience. It says you have the nature of the devil. So no matter how nice you are, no matter your sacrificial giving, no matter your sacrificial service in a church, if you are not saved, you carry the nature of the devil in you. Once you are saved, the next thing is for you to renew your mind. And that's why we're talking about reprogramming your mind by the word. Good evening, my name is Ambrose and welcome to Ambrose King Online Ministries where we give your life the lifting by the word of God. You see, it's, it says here, in the time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience. When you are not saved, it is the power of the air, the power of the devil that walks in you. And that's why we tell everybody to get saved the Bible way, to come to God the right way. You see, no matter how nice you are, no matter your giving, your sacrificial giving, or your membership in any denomination, if you are not saved, if you don't have the nature of God in you, the Bible says that you are the children of wrath and, and that the prince of the power of the air is operating your life, the spirit that walketh in the children of disobedience. So once you get saved, the next thing for you to do is to renew your mind. And unfortunately, a lot of people miss out in renewing mind. They don't even know what it means to renew their mind. Once you get saved, you become a new creation. That's why in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17, it says, If any man is in Christ, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Once you are saved, all things, all your old nature, all the bad things inside of you, the real you is a spirit. Your, Your new nature comes alive. And your new nature is not sin because it carries the nature of God. It carries the, uh, it's called the recreated spirit. And that spirit is according to Christ. So your born again spirit is perfect. Your born again spirit is whole because God did, did a perfect work in you when you got saved. You know, but the spirit that you have is a brand new spirit. Your spirit is totally new. There is not any sin nature left in it because it says if any man be in Christ, it is a new creature. So you have to look at that word new creature. It says all things are passed away. So what are those old things that are, that are passed away? Your old self that is uh, ruled by Satan, dominated by Satan, is passed away. That's what the Bible says. So until we take the word of God literally for what it says and accept it and act on it, you will not get the full benefit of what Jesus came to do for you on the cross. You see, this is not talking about your body. Your body is not saved. Your body is still the old body. If you were a man before you accepted Christ or you got saved, you are still a man afterward. If you are a woman, you are still a woman. Your body didn't change. And your soul, which is, which is what the Bible calls the mental emotional part of you, which is your emotion, your soul did not get saved. You know, um, you didn't automatic, your soul did not automatically change. But it is subject to change. You have to renew your mind to experience change in your mind and emotion. This is where your work is needed, not salvation. You salvation, salvation is free, but once you get saved, you need to work on your mind. So no matter how beautiful you look, no matter how handsome you look, if your mind is not renewed, if you if you don't if your spirit is not saved, you are not beautiful on the inside because God look the inside. So that's why you have to allow the word of God once you come to Christ. That is the first step. The next thing is for you to 
make sure your mind is reprogrammed. Because before you came to God, you were thinking the way the world view, the way the world thinks, world philosophy and all, all those wicked nature, anger, malice, uh, greed, and so many other things. You know, unforgiveness. But when you come to God, you have to allow the Holy Spirit through the Word of God to renew your mind. God expects you to do it. It is your responsibility. It's not your pastor's responsibility. It's not your bishop's responsibility. But it's your responsibility. Let me read Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 23. Ephesians 4, 23. It says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Be renewed. You are the one to renew your mind. You are the one to renew because your soul is not saved. It is your spirit that came alive that is born again. Your recreated spirit is the one that is after Jesus. That's why the Bible says, as he is, so are we on this earth. As he is. God did a perfect work, work in you. And that's why there is no sin in your spirit, but in your soul. You have to renew your soul. You have to renew your body. It's your body that is now susceptible to sin. You know, in 2 Corinthians 5, uh, verse 21, I believe, he say, um, Him who knew no sin became sin for us so that we can become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. When we say you are righteous, when I say I'm righteous, it is the spirit, the soul, the, the, the part that goes to heaven. That is the one that is uh, righteous. The body is still susceptible to sin, weakness, and so many other things. So, we have to now renew our mind. That's why Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 20 says, It says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You have to renew your mind. When you look at that word renewed in the spirit, that word Greek word is ananeo. It means to renovate, to reform. So you have to reform your mind. Nobody will do it for you. Jesus won't do it. Christ won't do it. God will do it. The Holy Spirit won't do it for you. It is your responsibility to do it with the agency of the word of God. So, so many you know, people that go to church, you see them, the way they talk. The way they act, you can see that they have not renewed their mind. We are not here to, you know, condemn them or, or anything, but at least, at least to let them know that it is their responsibility to renew their mind. Unfortunately, so many people are so um, caught up in prophetic ministry. I, I don't have anything against prophetic ministry if it's true, if it's a, a good, accurate, truthful one, or looking for miracles or visions. Those things will not renew your mind. It's only the word of God that will help you to renew your mind. That's Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 3 says the command is be renewed in your in the spirit of your mind. So it is a command from God that you as a Christian, as a born again child of God, that you need to renew your mind. You need to renew the way you think. You need to renew the way you see things from the world system to the kingdom of God system. That's why, you know, we created the Kingdom Lovers Group where we speak the word of God, we share the word of God and that help us to stay focused in the word and stay focused in the word of God instead of Focusing on our experiences. You see, you are sinning <laughs> if you refuse to renew your mind. If you don't renew your mind by the word of God, you are sinning. So, um, because it's a command right in uh, Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 23. God wants to expect us to do the work. And that's where you do your works. Salvation is free. Salvation is your faith alone, not your work. But in the process of renewing your mind, you have to cooperate with the agency of the word of God and the Holy Spirit. In Romans chapter 12, I'm going to read verse 1 to 2. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And verse 2, verse 2 of Romans chapter 12, it says, And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. You see, you have to renew your mind. It's a command. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So you have to renew your mind. That is that Greek word again, ananeo, which means to renovate or to trans reform your mind. Because before you came to Christ, you were thinking the way the world system having desire of greed. So many things were coming to your mind. The way you speak, the way you you know conduct yourself. But God doesn't want us to remain the way we are. Jesus said, "Come the way you are, but don't remain the way you are." And the number one responsibility is to renew your mind by the word it's a command you know watching tv watching news and watching programs on tv will not help you to renew your mind watching african movies no matter how spiritual it looks will not help you to re the african movie will not help you to renew your mind your experiences will not help you to renew your mind dreams and visions prophecies those things will not help you to renew your mind because the devil also operates in dreams he also operates in vision and prophecies you know um you are still operating in the world system when you're watching all those movies, all those TV. I'm not against them, but you have to know what you are getting yourself into if you are to please God, if you are a child of God. 
So many people don't know and so many people are not taught. And that's why Ambrose King Online Ministries will give you the word of God the way it is. So that your life will be improved. Only time and meditation or renew your mind. Because you have to do it. The word of God is given to us. Our Bible is not given to us to just to be carrying around or putting under our pillow. It was given to us so that through the agency of the Holy Spirit and the word of God, we can fulfill this mandate and command that we need to renew our mind. Let me read Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things and whatsoever things are lovely, Whatever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. He has already given us what to think on, what to feed our spirit with. Because your spirit responds to what you, uh, what you hear, what you see, what you touch. You know, so you have to make sure that you meditate, you ponder, you think on good report, honest report, and things that are... Uh, of praiseworthy false doctrine that's where false the problem with false doctrine when you keep listening to false doctrine lies non-truth or almost truth they will mess up your mind they will mess up your spirit because you will you, you need the full truth of the word of god this might be you know very difficult to understand at first initially when when you hear this non-truth and false doctrine they are what is called uh, uh, sensational messages to to lure you but until you understand that you have to go for the full truth and meditate on the full truth, if you keep following non-truth, false doctrine, almost truth or lies, they will mess up your spirit. It's a fact because God has already told us in Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 what to do. If you do otherwise, just to please yourself or to please anybody, you'll be messing up your mind. And to unlearn non-truth is very difficult. To unlearn false doctrines is very difficult. That's why it's good to get it right the first time. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 16, let's take this one step further. It says, For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? You know, say we, but we have the mind of Christ. Glory to God. Every born again believer has the mind of Christ. In your recreated spirit, you have the mind of Christ. You have the ability to think godly thoughts. You have the ability to think Christ thought. You have the ability to function in the realm of Christ. He said right here, we have the mind of Christ, but until you develop it, until you renew your mind, it will not conform to the mind of Christ. You see, that's why God told us, don't chase after miracles. Don't chase after prophets. Don't chase after prophecies. Or, unfortunately, these days, that's what people are chasing after, miracles, prophets. I don't have anything against them. But God has already told us, you know, to renew our mind through the word. Now, how can you renew your mind? What, what, what do you have to do? Again, as I said, don't be chasing after miracles or false prophecies because those are sensational messages that although they are, they are, they are genuine prophecies and they are genuine miracles, but don't, don't build your life around those things. You know, it's a mistake that everybody, you know, make. I, I made those mistakes every time, many years ago when I was still growing up, you know, in the Lord. So we are not here to condemn you, but at the same time, understand that it is your responsibility to make sure that you are in a place where the word of God will be fed to you and you will use the word of God to renew your mind. So, number one, what do you need to do? Your own part. What do you need to do besides just going to church, going to program? You know, every Sunday you're going to... You know, I don't have anything against church. But if you are not renewing your mind, you are just in a club. And it will not give you any eternal reward. When you look at Ephesians chapter 1, I'm going to read verse 15 to 21. It says, Wherefore, this is Apostle Paul, giving us um, the insight on how to renew our mind. Wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith, in the Lord Jesus, and love unto the saints. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers. Look at verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, I love that. It says the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, not the God of bishops, so and so, not the God of apostles, so and so, not the God of prophets, so and so, not the God of my pastor. It says the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. My goodness. It's telling us that it's not enough to just get saved. It's not enough to just to belong to a church. You must ask for that spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. When you look at verse 18, it said, The eyes of your understanding be enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling. When, when the spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of God is operating in your life, your eyes of understanding become open. You become awakened. 
to the reality of what God did. That's why you find some people, they are so excited about God's word. Other people, they're, they're looking at what somebody wear, the type of head tie, the type of shoe, uh, the English that the, the preacher preach, the shoes or the building. They are so fascinated with other things. But the other person who has gotten that spirit of wisdom and revelation into the knowledge of the word of God, they receive the word of God in their spirit and they are excited. They are hungry for more of God's word. Everything about them surround, everything about them is about God and God's word. Glory to God. He said that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened. God wants your eyes to be enlightened. He now said that you may know what is the hope of his calling. When you understand why God has brought you out of that place to his marvelous life, my goodness, you will be so excited, you will be hungry after him, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what, and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the sense. You are born into a glorious inheritance. But those glorious inheritance will not be delivered to you outside the word of God. That's why you have to chase after the word of God. Not after prophets, not after miracles, not after signs and wonders. Glory to God. Oh, because you have an inheritance. It's only the word of God that can deliver that inheritance into your hand. That's why Apostle Paul said, I commit to God and to the word of grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. And look at verse 19. What did you, what type of inheritance are you born into? He said, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us, us world who believe according to the working of the mighty power which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him in his own right hand in the heavenly places far above all principality, oh dear Jesus, and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come. That is the power of God that is at work in you, the believer. You are not an ordinary being. You are full of power. You are loaded. But until you renew your mind, you will not be able to tap into that resident power inside of you glory to god you'll be looking for help where there is no help you know number one you need to know that you need to have a deeper understanding of god's word and crave for his word that's why you need the spirit of wisdom and revelation into the knowledge that knowledge is not ordinary knowledge the greek word is epignosis it means abstract total and full knowledge you have to pray to receive that with spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him just you, you it's something that you have to do that's why apostle paul said that he's praying for you to receive that spirit of wisdom and revelation into the knowledge of God. Because it starts with you understanding the word of God for it to rend your mind. And until you receive that spirit, you may not have, the eyes of your understanding may not be enlightened. That's why you have what is, what is called carnal Christian. Carnal Christians, they are so dangerous. Oh my goodness. And yet, they are in the church. <laughs> the spiritual Christian, they are not those who see vision. No, the spiritual Christian are those who have received the spirit of wisdom and revelation into the knowledge of God. And apply it into their life to renew their mind and they are living in it that's why they are called spiritual christian so you have to um seek that accurate knowledge and get hungry for this word number two what you need to do to renew your mind you have to speak the word of god speak the word of god not the world view not how you feel not tradition not culture not non-doctrine not non-truth not lies, but the word of God. With God of God is the absolute truth. You have to speak the word. Let me take you to Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. It said, We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believed, and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. You have to believe the word of God, and the word of God has to always come out of your mouth. You have to speak it to yourself over and over. Whether you're in a car, you're in the bathroom, taking your shower, you are cooking, you are washing clothes, keep speaking the word of God. When people talk to you, when they speak foul language, speak negative statements, speak back the word of God. So as you speak the word of God, you are renewing your mind. You will never hear me say evil or negative things. I, <laughs> that's because I've learned to renew my mind. And also, you, you won't like to be around people who always talk dirty language, foul language, evil or worldly law talks. Because as you are among them, it will corrupt your mind. You know, that's why... It says right there, we believe. So whatever you believe, you believe the word of God, not world view, not world system. You believe the word of God and you speak it. You say, you haven't, that's what is called spirit of faith. The spirit of faith believes the word of God and speaks. The spirit of faith always believes the word of God and that's what God wants you to operate in as a believer. Number three, you have to be a doer of the word. Whatever the Bible says to do, you do it. When the Bible says, says something, for instance, in Psalm 91, it says, I will say of the Lord. You are my refuge. So at that point, you will say it back to him. Lord, you are my refuge. You are my deliverer. Oh, glory to God. So you will say it back to him. When, whenever you see God say, say something, don't be quiet. That's when you say it back. So you are a doer of the word. Let me read James chapter 1 verse 22. Why it's very important for you to be a doer of the word and not just a hearer of the word. 
In James chapter 1, verse 22, it says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers, only deceiving your own self. When you are a hearer of the word, and you are not a doer of the word, you are going to confuse your spirit. You are going to deceive your spirit. Your born-again spirit responds to what you do, what you say, based on the word. But when you are saved, and you are doing the things of the world, you are deceiving your spirit. You know, that's not a good thing to do. You see, many people have deceived their spirit because they take the word of God they heard with no value by not acting on the word. So the word of God is of no value to them. You might be looking at me now and say, Brother Ambrose, how does how can I apply this to my life? Because you have been saved, you have been in a church for 2, 20, 30, 40 years, and you are still saying, speaking foul language, speaking, doing things as the world. You want to change. There are some behaviors you want, want to change, but you are unable to do it. How 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 can you? How can you change? <clears throat> Number one, you have to act on the word. You have to learn to act on the word. You have to know that it is your responsibility. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 16, it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. It tells you what to do. Number one, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Not scarcely. Let the word of God dwell inside of you. And not just the word of God, but the word of Christ dwell in you. Not in your mind. Dwell inside of your spirit. That means you have to take your Bible. You have to learn to sit and read it and talk to yourself. Let the word jump from the pages into your spirit. How? By having constant fellowship with the word of God. By singing spiritual song. Singing with grace in your heart unto the Lord. Glory to God. So don't expect people to, number one, when you start doing this, when your mind starts being renewed, don't expect people to like you when you start renewing your mind. <clears throat> because you start thinking differently. The words that come out of your mouth will be different from the worldview. When people are saying they are sick, they are half flu, they have this, they have disease, they are this, they, they are broke, you'll be saying different things. You'll be declaring the word of God that, oh, you are healed. Not that you are trying to make fun, because now you are renewing your mind to know that by the stripes of Jesus, you are already healed. You won't be saying that you are broke because the Bible says that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You see, you are renewing your mind. You say, I, I, you know, my God shall supply all of my needs according to the riches and glory by Christ. You see, you are renewing your mind and it's coming out of your mouth. As you renew your mind, it has to come out of your mouth. <clears throat> and of course, when you start talking like that, even your best friend, your family members will hate you because they will think you are arrogant, you are bragging. You know, when, when you start renewing your mind on the word of God, the word of God must always come out of your mouth. What is the word of God that comes out of your mouth? Words that is consistent with what God has said concerning you. You know, you'll be rejected by your closest friends. Your associates, your uh, colleagues, they will hate you. And they will think you are from a different world. You know, the thing is, it is what God wants for you. And it is better to please God than to please anybody else. It's better to please God than to please people. And as you renew your mind, as you act on the word, as you reflect the word of God in your environment, you will be rewarded in heaven. It's part of the crowns that await you in heaven. So you need to immediately cut off from negative and foul mouth people to begin your journey of renewing your mind in the world. You see where I live. <laughs> oh my goodness. There are class of people here. <clears throat> the way they speak. Oh, I'm going to F you. I'm going <laughs> to... I can't say this word. And that's how... S-H-I-T, they speak negative, foul language constantly. When you are around those people, <laughs> you will pick up from them. And that's why you need to cut away from people who speak foul language, dirty language, curse words. Stay away from them as much as possible. I know in your job, it might be difficult because your colleagues, that's what they you know, talk about in their lunch room, in their break. That's how they talk when you go out. You know. But the <laughs> Bible tells us you are not of this world. So it is your responsibility to begin your journey of renew your mind and stay in it through the word. And, and, and you can do it. And I call you to go ahead and do it. Start renewing your mind if you have not renewed your mind. A lot of people that that, that post comments on, 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 on my pages, on other people that I read, the way they talk about <laughs> their doctrine and the way you can tell that they have not renewed their mind. And God expects you to renew your mind. It's better for you to renew your mind than to do any other thing. As I said before, your giving is okay, but none of your sacrificial giving None of your sacrificial service will, um, <laughs> will, will substitute for you renew your mind. So you cannot bribe God. God wants you to renew your mind. It is your responsibility. 
How? By sitting down with the word of God and reading the word of God and meditating on the word of God and saying to yourself over and over until the word of God, the word lifts from the pages, which is the, 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 the logos, and become rema to you, begin to speak it. Because say, according to the word we just read, David said, he said, what we believe, we speak. So you have to always speak. You have to have that spirit of faith. And with that spirit of faith, you can renew your mind. And God expects to do that. And when you do that, the way you think, the way you talk, the way you see the worldview, the way you uh, go after God's word instead of miracles or signs and wonders will be so different. And people may not understand it, but it's okay. It's better for you to please God than to please people, you know, because you will stand before God. So go ahead, get into your Bible, get hold of your Bible and let the word of God be your best friend. Let it be your lover, your best lover, the word of God. And let that word of God settle in your spirit. Get the word of God. Let it dwell in you richly. And as it dwells in you richly, in richly, open your mouth and begin to speak the word of God day and night without ceasing until rapture. Yeah, you can do it. Glory to God. You might be watching me today and say, Brother Ambrose, I need to get saved. I don't know where you don't know where you will end. If the world was to end today, are you going to be in heaven or are you going to be in hell? With all those things that are coming in the world, even nowadays, you don't even know who are the right preachers. There are so many falsehoods going on, so many false doctrines going on. A lot of people even call me, they say they are not even sure if they are saved. Well, the thing is, you have to make sure that you are saved now. Don't wait to the last, to the last minute and don't be caught up guy by surprise because Jesus will come like a thief in the night. You know, it's appointed not to man to die once and after that is judgment. So, Make sure that you know that your name is written in the Lamb Book of Life. Let me read Galatians chapter 6, verse 15 to 16 to you as I round up. Galatians chapter 6, verse 15 to 16 as I round up. I trust that this short video has been a blessing to you. Go ahead and uh, share it and part your comment and let me know how you feel about it. Galatians chapter 6, verse 15 to 16. It says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availed anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. Wow. What matters to Christ is a new creature. That means you are saved. Not only saved, you renew your mind. That's why we talk about new creation. That's why you have to understand what belongs to the new creation. God is interested in the new creation. That's why I said, <clears throat> no matter how nice you are, no matter how beautiful you may look, no matter how handsome you look, what matters to God is your spirit. What is the state of your spirit? If you are not saved, your spiritual state is dead, is dirty, is evil, is Mark as a ch- you are marked, look upon as children of disobedience, a child of the devil. So come to God today and be renewed by you getting your spirit alive to getting saved. You know, he said, For in Christ Jesus, Galatians chapter 6, verse 15, he said, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. And verse 16, what is, and as many as walk according to this rule, peace be of them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. Glory to God. So, do you belong to Jesus? Do you belong to God? Or do you belong to the world? The world will always say, give you things to attract you to sin, things to attract you to the loss of the world. And yet, God says, you know, uh, do not love the world and the things in the world. He said, anyone that loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Uh-huh. So, come to God today. Come to God through Jesus. Get saved the right way. All you need to do is hear the gospel. The gospel is in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 1 to 4 that Jesus Christ died for all of your sins. Past, present, and future sins. All of them. He died for them. But until you appropriate it, it will not work for you. How do you appropriate it? You put your faith alone on what Jesus did by repenting and saying, Lord, I've been going doing the wrong way. I need the Savior. Jesus, you are my Savior. When you turn to God, you say it back to him. You have to say, remember, faith has a voice. It's by faith. Faith in what Jesus did. The blood that Jesus shed. Jesus went through that bloody mess for you and I. So that you can be saved from the wrath to come. And that's the only way you can even start your journey to renew your mind. Glory to God. So, in in, in, in Romans chapter 10 verse 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So, once you put your, once you believe that Jesus died on that cross for you, he shed that blood, and you believe the next thing is to say it to God, privately or publicly, and you are done. And once you do that, the Holy Spirit come and save you. That's what the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13. So, renew your mind, not start by you having constant fellowship with the Word of God and the Holy Spirit. And putting your faith in what the Word of God says. And remember, faith always has a voice. In other words, you must say it. You must say it. Have personal fellowship with God. Tell others about your salvation. Tell others about Jesus. 
Because until you renew your mind, you will still think like the world system. You will still have the world view. You should be, still behave like the world. Even though Jesus said you are in the world, but not of the world. Glory to God. Remember, 1 Corinthians 4, verse 13, it says, We have in the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. So you have to believe the word of God. Whatever the word of God says, you speak it. For instance, it says, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. So what do you do? Oh, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. He said himself took our sins. He himself took our infirmities. And, you know, he gave us his righteousness. So what do you do? You begin to say it. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Say it to yourself over and over until your mind lay hold of the word. And that's how you renew your mind through the word of God. Glory to God. Thank you. Thank you. My time is up. I trust that this short video has been a blessing to you. Thank you for fellowship with me. And go ahead and put your comments and let me know what you think about this video. Understand it is your responsibility to renew your mind through the word of God. Nobody can do it for you. Your husband cannot do it for you. Your wife cannot do it. Your children, your pastor, your bishop, your Jew, your papa, your, your, your prophet, they cannot do it. It is your responsibility. So don't be caught off guard. After you leave this earth to find out that you didn't renew your mind. So get started if you have not renewed your mind. And if you already renew your mind, continue to renew your mind until Jesus comes. Because revelation is progressive. Once again, thank you for fellowshiping with me. I love you with the love of Christ. But Jesus made it possible for you to have his mind. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. So, But you have to renew your mind through the word of God. For the mind of Christ to manifest in and through you. God is counting on you. So go ahead. You can do it. Renew your mind through the word of God and let it reflect through what you say and your action. God bless you and I see you again in my next video. Bye-bye.